on to my top spot, my favorite daily trainer of the year. So good evening, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a video sharing my top six daily trainers of the year. If you're completely new to the channel, my name is Ben and this is my channel, Ben is Running. If you enjoy the video, please leave a like, stick around, hit that subscribe button. Without further ado, let's jump into my top six shoes of the year. Just a bit of a heads up, I've got some notes here so I don't miss anything. Um, I wanna give you the key stats, what they're best suited for and who they're best suited for and also some strengths and some weaknesses for each shoe. So I'm gonna start at number six and this year my sixth favorite shoe is the Hocker Mac 5. Now the Mac 4 was my favorite daily trainer of 2021. So it doesn't take the top spot this year, but I still have loved running in this shoe. They've updated the midsole here, Pro 5 Plus, just makes it a little bit softer um, than the previous version and it's an excellent shoe in terms of comfort and it's sort of a no thrills um, traditional daily trainer and I really enjoy getting in my mileage in this shoe. Price point for this one is 130 pounds and it weighs 232 grams in my UK size eight. And in terms of the drop, it has a five millimeter drop. So this shoe is best for people who are looking for a reliable shoe that can do everything to a good level. You can do easy runs, tempo work, you can even race in this shoe if you wanted to. Big strength of this shoe is the comfort and overall lightweight feel. This shoe really gets lost on foot when running in it. The weakness is it's very similar to the Mac 4 and if I'm totally honest I probably would look at picking up that Mac 4 at a discounted price now that the new version has come out. So the Nike Invincible 2 takes my number 5 spot of the year. It's just broke into the top 5. People absolutely love this shoe um, and I can see why it's very very comfortable. Zoom X midsole is very very soft and cushioned underfoot. Um, and for me, it's been an excellent easy and recovery run shoe and if you're looking for a shoe in between sessions. So for me, I love to use this shoe on a Wednesday, which typically is in between my two hard sessions of the week. Um, and it just allows me to get the miles in, but also protects the legs from the impact so that they can recover um, in time for my next session. Price point for this one is £165 and in my UK size A it weighs 317 grams and it has a 9mm drop. So this is a great shoe option for somebody who's maybe in marathon training, who's looking for a shoe that they can get their miles in on tired legs. It helps protect them and yeah, I find that it's a great recovery day option for me. Big strength to this shoe is that max cushion. It protects the legs and the weakness would be, again, it's very, very similar to the Nike Invincible one and I probably again would look at getting that shoe at a discount price. In at number four is the A6 Nova Blast 3, um, a fairly new one in my shoe rotation and A6 have absolutely nailed this shoe. And that midsole is the key to this shoe, a new midsole, FF Blast Plus. Um, it just makes it a lot softer and a lot more bouncy and responsive than the Nova Blast 1 and 2. Quick stats. 130 pounds, brilliant price point. And for me, in my UK size eight, it weighs 253 grams with a nine millimeter drop. It's great for somebody looking for a comfortable, easy day option, but that can also pick up the pace. The strength for me has to be that energy return. Like I said, it's great for easy runs or progression runs where you wanna pick up the pace. The weakness for me is the drop. It feels quite aggressive and it gets me onto my toes, which is great when you wanna run fast. But for easy and recovery runs, um, that's not necessarily what you need or want. So for me, it sits right at the top of my easy pace and into my tempo slash interval shoe. So in at number three is the New Balance Super Comp Trainer. Now this is by far the most innovative shoe of the year. It's got 47 millimeters of stack height in the heel. So it's actually a road legal, but it's great for training. Um, it's also got carbon fiber plate. Um, so of all these shoes, this is probably the one I'm most excited for. And if it wasn't for the price point, I probably would put it at number one. So quick stats, 210 pounds here in the UK and it weighs 320 grams in my UK size eight. And this one has an eight millimeter drop. So this is a great shoe for people who are looking for comfort. They also want a shoe that's nice and responsive, but also can protect the legs. This shoe does it all. I've done runs in this shoe up to around 25, 30 kilometers. And the next day I've woken up and it's felt like I've not done a run at all. The strength for me is I can wake up fresh leg the next day, which for a daily trainer is just what you want. But that weakness is the price point. 210 pounds is just simply unaffordable, especially for a daily trainer. Um, and I'm hoping if New Balance bring out a second version of this, that they can bring it more at the 150, 160 pound price point, which I think will make it a lot more attractive 
and yeah probably would have seen this shoe take number one spot so my number two spot for the year it's getting close getting to the top of the pile the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 takes number two it almost took the top spot um, but I'll go on to that shoe that takes the win in a minute um, this shoe is great for easy runs but it's exceptional when you want to pick up the pace um, it's definitely of all the shoes here the most versatile um, you can do your recovery runs and you could even race in this shoe if you're somebody who likes a park run um, and you also want to get your training miles in a shoe then this is the one for you it can do pretty much everything to a very very high standard it's got a nylon plate um, but it still has a nice bit of flexibility which make it ideal for training some quick stats, this comes in at 165 pounds and it weighs 229 grams in my UK size 8 and it also has a drop of 8 millimeters. This shoe is best for somebody looking for an all rounder, a one shoe does all type thing. As I said, easy runs, tempo runs, long runs, races, this shoe could do it all if it needed to um, and that is why it takes number two. The strength is its versatility and the weakness actually is the colorway. I just find it doesn't match with, with much of my running gear um, and yeah I haven't used it as much as a result. On to my top spot, my favorite daily trainer of the year, it is the On Cloud Monster. Um, I don't know what it is about this shoe but it has just clicked for me, it's ticked all the boxes and it has been my go-to trainer. As you can see I've put a lot of miles into it, I think about 500. Um, I recently went on holiday and this is one of the shoes that I took with me, hence why it's a little bit dirty. Um, it's got some Lanzarote um, volcanic dust in it now, um, so it's probably picked up a little bit of weight. But yeah, this shoe for me takes the top spot. Um, from on running, it's really exciting to see those guys, a relatively new company, competing with the likes of Hocker, Asics, Nike, and yeah, actually taking my top spot this year. It was a real surprise. For me, the cloud technology that this shoe has, each of these individual pods compress, and it gives it a really fun and exciting ride. Um, and yeah, just, just right, works really well for me. I'm a bit more of a mid to heel foot striker. Um, I don't know if that's been a reason why I've enjoyed this shoe so much. Quick stats, this one costs £150 and in my UK size 8 it weighs 275 grams um, for a 6mm drop. So this shoe is great for somebody looking for a comfortable daily trainer that has a really fun bouncy ride and it never gets boring. It's a bit cringe but I'd say the first mile in this shoe was exciting as say the 400th mile in this shoe. Um, it's just a really fun one to run in and hence why I've used it for so much of my training runs. So the strength for me is it's a fun, bouncy ride that never gets boring and the downside to this shoe is actually the decals on the upper here have come off so I had to super glue them back on. But again, that hasn't affected the overall durability and performance of this shoe. Um, credit to On for taking the top spot um, for me this year. I hope you've enjoyed this insight into the shoes that I've used in my easy training miles. Um, if you have any questions about the shoes in this video um, then please don't hesitate to drop them in the comments below and if you would like to pick up any of these shoes they're all available at Pro Direct Running. I've left an affiliate link down below it just means I get a little bit of a kickback I think it's something like 3% if you would like to purchase any of these shoes so if you wouldn't mind doing that that would be great but until next time aspire to run, run to inspire Oh, and let me know in the comments what are your favourite daily trainer shoes of the year. Love to hear your top three. Until next time, bye-bye.